tell my younger self, stop dreaming so much about it and just start writing. For real. <laughs>toughest writing project that I've ever had to do would be Rattlesnake just because of the circumstances you know we were in a global we are in a global pandemic but I wrote it during the pandemic and you know I was by myself quarantined um, alone and you know had really tight timelines and um, I didn't have anyone physically there to encourage me so it was really difficult for me and I really had to like did deep and you know god really just came through for me and just like helped me finish um so yeah i would say that was definitely the toughest um writing project i've had till date there's a story there's a story <laughs> there's a story that I've, i'm burning to write and i'm actually writing um, but it isn't a script, it's a novel and I'm not going to say what it's based on because I don't want to get the cat out of the bag but um, it is around women and my Igbo heritage um, and yeah, it is going to be turned into a film at some point, inshallah but it's a novel I was kind of struggling at first I, I knew it was a novel and then I, I thought hmm, maybe it's a script but I think it's a novel. I'm back to writing the novel and you know, a novel can always become a movie, but a movie can't become a novel. The most valuable piece of writing I've ever gotten is you cannot edit a blank page. So write. <laughs> You know, I don't know. Balance is one of those things. Sometimes you have balance and sometimes you don't. I haven't mastered the art of balance. And I, I kudos and shout out to the people that have. Um, I've always had a nine to five, you know, out of university, went to law school, right after law school, NYSC. And I've had a nine to five ever since 2011. So um, I've always had to, I guess, balance. But it's one of those things that it never feels like balance. It always feels like an, the ultimate sacrifice or, you know, instead of hanging out with friends, you're going to have to be alone writing with your characters and thinking and things like that. So I guess that is balance, but it's kind of like a choice to just do the writing in your free time. That's really what it is. Um, I guess the people who do know, the people who do balance things well are people who have schedules and people who say, oh, I only write at this time and stuff like that. I'm not like that. I, I, don't, I don't work like that. I just, you know, I just do what I can do. I just do the best I can do. <laughs> That's it, really. Okay, so I really thought about this question and it was really hard because I don't know, like I don't have, there's not one writer that I'm just like obsessed with. There are books, there are movies that I'm obsessed with, but I don't know, not one. Does that make sense? It's really hard. But if I had to choose, if I had to choose, I would say I, I want to have dinner and the two people I'm choosing are dead. Because I'm a weirdo, no. But because I, I literally can't think of anybody like that trumps these two people. But I would say one would be Toni Morrison because it's Toni Morrison. And you know, funny enough, I haven't read a lot of Toni Morrison's work. I actually haven't. But the things I have read and the knowledge that she spews, like I just feel like she would be a like fountain of wisdom. And so that would be one. 
And then the second person I would say would be Chinua Achebe, just because like one, I, I think he's one of the most phenomenal writers that has ever lived on this earth. And two, because he is Igbo and I'm very, I'm Igbo and I'm very interested in Igbo history and heritage and culture. I feel like it would be like my grandfather telling me stories. And I just feel like it would be like Tales by Moonlight, like in the flesh, I feel like it would be awesome. And so yeah, those would be the two people I wanna have dinner with. I think being a writer helps me be more sensitive to things, more aware. I'm very self-aware. I know what I do, why I do it, um, why people do things. Um, I can, I'm very discerning. I have a very, like, I have this, like, sixth sense, I think, about people. And I think that's because I'm a writer. I feel like I can pick up a lot of things um, in body language. I pay attention. So I would say it makes me more present, um, which I think is really important to be present, you know, um, and to be aware. Yeah. <laughs> Scenes. Okay, I have, I, have, I don't know, what would people, what would be strange? Okay, I barely sit down. Um, I literally have back issues, so I have a yoga mat um, behind me. And so I write lying down or standing up, which is kind of strange. Um, another weird thing, I don't know if it's weird actually, but I watch a lot of reality TV, like everything, all the Real Housewives, you know, franchises. I watch, I'm currently watching this show called Ready to Love, which I'm kind of obsessed with. I don't know if that's surprising, but that's what happens behind the scenes. I'm on my yoga mat watching reality television. <laughs> Real talk. <laughs> Okay, Santa, oh, I wish she was real. Um, but <laughs> I was gonna say something that I'm not gonna repeat. Um, Santa, if I could get a gift from Santa, I would be super specific because in this life, like opportunity comes but once. So um, I would ask for him to pay for um, Siren Learn Writers Conference. 2021 or 2022, maybe because of COVID, they might not be doing 2021, but it is an amazing writing conference that happens in Italy and um, it's kind of pricey. So if Santa could pay for that, we'll be G's for life. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna give a shout out to Chibundu Onuzo. She is a Nigerian novelist based in London. She's the writer of The Spider King's Daughter, Welcome to Lagos, and her third novel is out next year called Sankofa. And she's just a legend. I just, she's somebody you should ask about balance. I feel like she understands that. She's a real writer. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>